Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another installment of Beards and Cars. This is my podcast style series where we talk about things in a more in-depth way. They tend to be longer form videos with countdowns, personal favourites, best of lists, that kind of stuff. And this time we're carrying on from the theme of last week, which of course was also inspired by a couple of themes from a few weeks before. Because initially we looked at our favourite cars from Gran Turismo, then our favourite tracks from Gran Turismo, last week our favourite cars from Forza, and now our favourite circuits from Forza. Now for me, it was actually too difficult to narrow it down to 10, because there are so many great circuits in the franchise that I just love too much, so I'm doing it as a 15. I can't recall if it was top 10 or top 15 for Gran Turismo, but it's a top 15 on this occasion. Now, there are a couple of tracks which you are probably expecting, and which many people will definitely have, which won't be on this list, both real and fictional. Because the great thing about both Gran Turismo and Forza is that they have a mix of real tracks and just completely fictional ones. So in the case of Forza, you've got stuff like the snake named test courses from Forza 2, for instance. Or in Gran Turismo, you've got stuff like... Uh, Deep Forest or Trial Mountain, these extremely popular fan favourites. On this occasion, most of my choices are real-world tracks, because I do tend to prefer those. So kicking us off, first of all, in 15th is Mugello. Now, Mugello is a track which a lot of people would probably rate considerably higher in the Forza franchise. For me, it's a track which I can definitely see why people love it so much. It's just never been one of my absolute favorites. I do like the track though. In some ways, it kind of reminds me of Road America, but like the Italian equivalent of that. Great long home straight, some deceptive sweeping corners. It's a great track for sure, just not one of my absolute favorites. It's a very good track for supercars and pretty good for touring cars as well. Next up in 14th, I'm putting a track which has actually only been featured, if I recall correctly, in one Forza game. And that was Forza Motorsport 3. And that track is Rally Depositano, but the full version. Because a number of Forza games featured Rally Depositano, but it's a very short version. It's like two miles long. This one is massive. It's seven and a half miles, extremely twisty track. And it's gorgeous. It's a great setting, a great location, and it's very reminiscent of tracks like Cita di Aria in Gran Turismo. That really long, very technical, super tight circuit with lots of hairpins. The road is barely wide enough to overtake most of the time. It's just a fantastic track. There's a lot of cobbled roads as well, a lot of hill sections. sections. <laughs> and I don't understand why they never featured it more than once, because it's such a good track. I guess maybe it wasn't that popular, maybe it would have been too difficult to... Or maybe they prioritised other tracks to update graphics-wise, because it is a big track, so it would have been a big undertaking. But you're looking at a similar kind of lap, if I recall, not quite on the same level as the Nürburgring, but it's a pretty long lap. It's, I think, like four to five minutes at least to do a full lap, so it's a pretty decent size, great rally track, great Jim Carner uh, style track as well. Next up in... Uh, 13th, I'm putting one of my favourite variations of a circuit, which came back to Forza more recently, and that is the Le Mans Bugatti circuit. Now, when you think of Le Mans, you always think of the same track layouts, either the old school without the chicanes, or the new school with them. Amazing track. Bugatti, though, doesn't get anywhere near as much love. Now, for those who haven't driven on Bugatti, it's kind of like the Le Mans equivalent of something like Laguna Seca. So, much more technical, much more uh, closed, much shorter lap, and not really as much of a chance to get up some really high speed. You're just corner to corner to corner, very intense action. It's a great little track. And basically the way that it uh, differentiates itself from the main track is that when you pass under that first banner, I think it's a Dunlop banner or a Michelin banner or whatever it is, near to the start line, instead of carrying on ahead and going through that S-bend and then going down the Mulsanne, you turn a very sharp curved right around a big sweeping hairpin and the track goes in on itself. It's a great circuit. If you haven't driven on it, I'd recommend going back to Forza Motorsport 3 or I think it's in Forza 6 and 7, a couple of the recent ones at least. 
It's a great track, very undervalued from what I've seen, but I'm a big fan of it. Next up, I'm putting one of the only fictional circuits, but this is probably the most iconic fictional circuit of the whole Forza franchise, Maple Valley. Maple Valley just has a charm to it, and again, for Gran Turismo players who haven't played Forza before, but who wanted to check out this video just to see the kind of tracks that they have, this is kind of like Forza's equivalent of Autumn Ring in Gran Turismo. The difference is, though, I like this a lot more than Autumn Ring. The track has a great high-speed flow. You very rarely drive slowly around any part of the track. You're just maintaining an average to high speed all the time, especially if you're in something like an LMP. It's a pretty short and sweet lap, but very competitive, very fast. It tends to be one of those tracks that you cover a lot in the early stages of the game, with like your Honda Integras and Golf R32s, that kind of level. But it's a great track. It can support any kind of racing, and it's just as competitive with any class of car. It's a great circuit, and I would say definitely the best fictional one overall of the whole franchise. Although it's not my favourite fictional one, I can see why people love it so much, and I do love it as well. Next up, I'm putting a track which has been featured in a few games, and actually has kind of been featured in Gran Turismo 2, or not Gran Turismo 2, Gran Turismo 4... I uh, can't recall if it was in any others, though. I think it might have been just Gran Turismo 4, actually, possibly the PSP. And that is New York, which is funny because it's a fictional track, and yet both franchises have a very similar interpretation of it because of the layout of the New York streets. So this is a very high-speed track. If you've driven this track on Gran Turismo but not on Forza, trust me, you've driven it because it's basically the exact same track. You've got that curving uh, left at the end, ultra long home straight, the square corner at the top, it's pretty much all the same. However, my favorite version in particular, which you can see here, is actually a version which was only featured in Forza Motorsport 1, and that is New York Long. It's a much much bigger circuit than any of the other games had, much bigger than the Gran Turismo version as well, and it's so much more fun. There are some really deceptive blind 90 degree corners, tons of long straights. It would be a fantastic track for stuff like uh, Australian V8 supercars, or DTM, or GT500, that kind of, kind of bumper to bumper, side to side, intense street battle. It's a great track for that kind of thing. The graphics don't hold up quite as much because of the age of the game, but the layout of the track is there. You can see its brilliance. I love New York anyway, but for me this one, it's great, because as I've said before, I really love long tracks in particular. Next up, I'm putting a track which I believe has been featured in at least a couple of the Forza games. I think Forza Motorsport 3, Forza Motorsport 4. I can't recall if they had it after that. I don't think they did. Camino, well, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but Camino de Viejo, or de Viejo, it's one of those tracks which was kind of very heavily pushed when it was first introduced in Motorsport 3. It was featured in a lot of the promotional footage and promotional art. It's got fantastic vistas, great sweeping corners. It's an ultimate supercar track in particular, but my favorite version is Camino Viejo Extreme, which is 4.3 miles long. Doesn't sound all that much, but it, it's a decent sized lap. It takes, what, two to three minutes, something like that. It's a great circuit. The road isn't all that wide, but the track is quite large. So it gives you this interesting problem of chasing down your opponents, but also actually being able to overtake them. It's almost like the the track profile of a city circuit in terms of how tight it is, but in a country setting. So long sweeping corners, but still a very tight road. It's an interesting type of track, looks fantastic, very high speed flow. I love it, absolutely love it. It feels great with supercars in particular, and also Le Mans prototypes. Next one is hugely popular, moving up into ninth place. This one will be on a lot of people's favourites. In fact, a lot of people will probably have it much, much higher. Fujimi Kaido. This track is iconic from the Forza franchise. It's essentially the ultimate drift track of the whole franchise because it's Japanese mountains. 
what more could you want for drifting downhill uphill of course downhill's better for drifting really but uphill has its own interesting twist more of a hill climb vibe i love the full circuit as well because you can do that full six or seven minute lap fantastic uh, competitive rivalry in terms of what cars are best to use well of course race cars will be quicker but there's something about fujimi kaido that feels better with street cars i think because the roads are so tight and technical that it feels almost more competitive if you take something like a subaru versus a mitsubishi or like a, an rx7 versus a supra that kind of traditional initial d kind of stuff i guess which of course is kind of the vibe that the track is going for fantastic circuit and you can also race on it in sprint form uphill downhill there are shorter sections as well i must admit i'm not a fan of the shorter sections they're too short so i just go for the ultimate downhill uphill or the full circuit great track though really really good track and i know a ton of you guys who are forza fans really really like this track next up i'm featuring a track which to my knowledge ended with forza 2 which was my, of course, introduction to the Forza franchise. And again, this is like the ultimate version of a certain layout of tracks, just like Fujimi Kaido was, and that is King Cobra. There's a number of snake named tracks like Mamba, uh, I think Copperhead, and they're basically all these different variations of a test course. And on this occasion, I would say that if Maple Valley is the autumn ring of the Forza franchise, I would say that King Cobra is the complex string of the Forza franchise, for those who have played Gran Turismo 3. That happens to be one of my favourite tracks of the whole Gran Turismo franchise. It's just this pure technical test course with a really long lap. That is exactly what King Cobra is for Forza. Now, I would say that King Cobra is not quite as challenging as Complex String. It's not quite as technical, but it's very clearly similar. It's like a 4.3 mile lap, something like that, 4.7 I think, but it's so good. The road is narrow, but not ridiculously narrow. It feels fantastic if you use stuff like aftermarket tuner cars, especially ones with all-wheel drive, where you can pull the e-brake, or the handbrake, to drift around some of the hairpins. It's just a great track. I really wish that they would bring this one back, but I don't... <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think that they will. It's a great circuit, though. I thoroughly, thoroughly love King Cobra. It might even be my favourite overall track from Forza 2, actually, in terms of ones that are no longer featured. Next up, it was a battle for me between two tracks in 6th and 7th, because I love both of these so much, but it kind of goes back and forth for me in terms of which one I prefer. Ultimately, though, in 7th place, I decided to put Sebring. Now, Sebring is a track which I want so much to come to Gran Turismo because it's such a unique circuit in terms of the look, the vibe, there's some really long straights, and yet, although the track itself looks and feels long, the lap doesn't actually take that long. It's fantastic for endurance racing. It's got the relatively unique vibe of having like a paved road with these big slabs, which makes the car kind of bounce a little bit. It's fantastic. It's a perfect track for stuff like taking your Viper GTSR up against Corvette C5Rs, you know, that kind of almost ALMS series, your Panos, various others too. It's just a great looking track. It's very bright, very light, very cheerful looking. But it's very competitive, that's for sure. It's a fantastic track for race cars in particular. Road cars, not so much. I'd say it's more of a, a pure race car track, really. Especially prototypes. Prototype racing gets very, very competitive around Sebring. But, moving up then into 6th, this is the one that I wasn't sure about. Because I also love this track so much. It's similar to Sebring, but I ultimately put it a little bit higher. But it's very, very close. Road America. I love Road America. To me, this is a pure supercar or even hypercar track. Really long straights, but you have to brake much earlier than you think. Some deceptive corners. And if you look at the shape of the track, it's actually fairly simple looking, but it's really competitive. There were so many times online where I would have great battles on this track. Because it's the kind of track where you would assume that you need just the fastest thing in a straight line. And sometimes that will work, but often you actually need a car with a deceptive amount of handling as well. Because, although that's an obvious thing to say, there are certain tracks which 
there are more than just speed. You know, like Le Mans, for instance, you would assume that just having the fastest top speed car would be good enough because half of the track is a straight. But it doesn't work that way because people can catch you up through the corners. And that's kind of like what Road America is. It's a fantastic track for either prototypes um, or supercars in particular, I would say. Although stuff like GT class vehicles feels fantastic there as well. Now, though, moving up into my top five, first of all, in fifth, I don't get the hate for this track. So many people seem to strongly dislike this circuit, and I do not understand why, because I think it looks fantastic. It's one of the best newer circuits, and I think it's just got a nice charm to it. Yas Marina. I really like Yas Marina. I race on it a lot. I drive on it a lot in the newer Forza games, because, of course, it wasn't featured before. I would love to see this one come to Gran Turismo. It actually wouldn't surprise me too much if it did, but I love this track. It's got an interesting change of pace and change of visual compared to the norm, because you've got stuff like actual runoff on the track instead of grass or sand, which makes it look completely different. You've got the great looking uh, lit up building on one section of the track, and it's deceptive. Again, long straight, or a couple of long straights, but very, very tight technical 90 degree turns. It's a track which I think a lot of people don't give enough respect to, because to get a good lap without cutting the corners or stuff like that is not as easy as you think. I mean, it's not difficult, of course, but people just take the track for granted, I think. Next up in fourth place, I'm putting a track which also featured in my countdown for Gran Turismo, and it's one which I do miss a lot, for sure, when it's not featured. And I didn't used to like it that much as a kid, but now I really do. It's changed names a few times, but I always call it Infineon. Infineon is a very technical circuit, surprisingly short lap though, it's shorter than it feels. Great track for race cars, NASCARs, DTM, touring cars, Super GT, prototypes, whatever kind of race car you want to take there, it feels fantastic. It's a brilliant circuit. I love racing prototypes there in particular. I love Infineon. It's a fantastic circuit. And yeah, it's definitely one of my favourites, which is funny given that I didn't particularly like it that much as a kid. Now though we move into my top three. And in third place, perhaps surprisingly to some, I'm putting my favourite track from Forza that Gran Turismo doesn't have yet. And I don't necessarily think they ever will, and that is Road Atlanta. Road Atlanta, I think, is a relatively undervalued track. People kind of take it for granted, but it's a brilliant circuit. It's a short and sweet lap, but there's some very high-speed sections, fantastic flow through the corners. It's a great-looking track. It's, it's almost got that Maple Valley kind of charm to it, where it's a very bright, sunny, friendly track. It's very beginner-friendly. It's great for slower cars like D-Class, C-Class, but at the same time, it's brilliant for stuff like ALMS, Petit Le Mans, even full-on Group Cs or LMP1 machines, because you can go through the corners so quickly. Deceptively competitive, fantastic circuit. I don't like the shorter version as much, for obvious reasons. I always prefer the longer variations of tracks. I adore Road Atlanta. I absolutely love it. And as I said, this is this would be my number one if you were talking tracks that Gran Turismo doesn't have, but Forza does. Moving up, though, into second place for tracks that both franchises have, the Nürburgring. The Nordschleife in particular, I love <laughs> this track. It might be the single track that I have the most mileage on over every game that features it, because it's just a perfect circuit. It's the ultimate challenge for most cars. It's a long lap. I've always just had um, just an affinity with the track, and I love it. I love it on Forza. I love it on Gran Turismo. And it's a brilliant circuit. It's one of the most iconic, one of the most grueling real-world circuits ever built. I've never been a fan of the GP course, and I'm not really much of a fan of the 24-hour course either. But the Nordschleife, just the standard pig's head, as I call it, because of the shape of the track, I adore that track. I absolutely love it. Of course, it had to be high. It was high for Gran Turismo as well. In fact, I think I put it in second place for my Gran Turismo list also. And also, of course, mirroring my Gran Turismo list, what else could I put in number one apart from my favourite racetrack of all time? Of course, number one has to be Le Mans. Le Mans is my favourite circuit ever. 
I already went into that in the Gran Turismo list, so I won't get super into the discussion here, but it's just a perfect track, like the Nordschleife, a little bit shorter, much higher speed, one of the greatest straight sections of any track in the world, one of the most iconic circuits with a rich, long racing history. Some of my favourite race cars of all time raced there and won there. It's It's got so much history, it's such a, a rich mythology around the track, it's like this mythical beast of a circuit as far as race tracks go, much like the Nürburgring. So yeah, for me, it's got to be number one. So overall, that's my top 15. There are definitely some that stand out more, despite their placement. But, I mean, stuff like Road Atlanta, Road at America, uh, Sebring, are definitely some of my absolute standouts that I go to the most in the Forza franchise. Yas Marina for me as well. So, of course, I'd love to see yours down below. You could do 10, you could do 5, you could do 15. Try not to do a ridiculous amount, because obviously most people won't read that many. But yeah, it's a perfect opportunity to have that discussion down below. If you haven't checked out my top favourite cars from the franchise, that was last week, so you can click through here on screen to see those, and you can also click through here to see the Gran Turismo versions of these videos for my favourite cars and favourite tracks of the whole series. But that's it overall for this pick, of course. I will see you guys next week, and for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>